If, um, I would like to remind my fellow commissioners about their uh, duty to avoid conflict of interest under North Carolina General Statute 138A 15E, which mandates at the beginning of any meeting of a board to cherish and remind all members of their duty to avoid conflicts of interest under Chapter 138. The chair shall also inquire as to whether there is any known conflict of interest with respect to any matters coming before the board at that time. Is there any known conflicts of interest? There being none, I'd also like for you all to reflect on North Carolina General Statute 143B 289.54.G2. Okay, um, Jesse, would you do us a roll call, please? Certainly. Commissioner Buffet? Present. Commissioner Blanton? Here. Commissioner Corbett? Here. Commissioner Gardner? Here. Commissioner Hopgood? Here. Commissioner Huggins? Present. Commissioner Rader? Here. Commissioner Roller? Here. And Chairman Bizzle? Here. Uh, we have a forum we may conduct business. In front of you and should have been emailed to you is our agenda. There is one amendment to this uh, agenda that I want to make. I want to have a summary of comments to be presented right after a briefing on the session law. And with this agenda and that amendment, may I have a, hate to say it, a roll call uh, vote to, first off, I need a motion to approve this agenda and a second. As motion, a motion to approve the agenda as amended by Commissioner Roller. Thank you. Second. second. By who? Huggins. Okay, Huggins second it. Okay, any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bethay. Here. Commissioner Blanton. Uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Commissioner <laughs> Corbett. Yes. Commissioner Gardner. Aye. Commissioner Hopgood. Uh. Commissioner Huggins. Aye. Commissioner Rader. Aye. Commissioner Roller. Yes. Chairman Bizzle. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, I would like to turn it over to um, uh, Philip Reynolds to uh, just give us a quick briefing on session law 2023-137, section six. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good to see you all. I will be very, very brief because you all are familiar with the session law. You've already seen these rules a couple of times. This is your final adoption of it. You're all aware that this has been directed um, by the legislature for the commission to to adopt these temporary rules. The Wildlife Resources Commission uh, met this morning and approved it on their end. And so now you all are up and it's your time your turn to approve these rules. Uh, give final approval to these, these temporary rules. Okay. Thank you, uh, Philip. Uh, just for clarity, this uh, came from the General Assembly and not from either the Marine Fisheries Commission or the Wildlife Resources Commission. Is that correct? As far as I know, I just know what the law says. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. It, 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 so, so I, I, my understanding is it wasn't something that was requested by the commission. My understanding is also that it wasn't something requested by the uh, division, but like many other things that come out of the General Assembly, here it is nonetheless. That's right. That's what I wanted to make sure about. Yep. Okay, I think we all have understood what we are voting on here and what this is about. Uh, if there's any questions for council, please ask now. Um, but if not, I will accept a motion to adopt these two um, uh, temporary rules uh, that we have uh, to consider today. Mr. Chairman, if I may interrupt just yes. for a minute, I apologize. I may have been going too fast. I, I, 
I understand that uh, Jesse's going to give a quick summation. I'm sorry. I, do, I did jump out in front. I'm sorry about that. That's my mistake. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, Jesse, Jesse would, would you give us a summary of the comments that we have, been, that we have received on these two uh, temporary rules? I certainly will, Chairman. So there were over 2,000 written public comments that were received on these proposed temporary rules. 2,009 of those came via our online comment form, and four of them actually were mailed letters. Uh, of those 2013 comments, 83 of them expressed opposition to the proposed rules. 10% of them were in support of the rules and 7% of the comments were undecided. Uh, in the comments that were against the rules, there were several common themes that emerged. Uh, many commenters believed that the rules were unenforceable and impractical and that there was no ability to ensure compliance with the rules. Uh, and as such, skepticism about the effectiveness and efficiency of the proposed reporting system was common, and many people had concerns about the accuracy and reliability of the collected data. Uh, opponents also often highlighted that the rules would add unnecessary bureaucracy and complexity and would actually diminish the enjoyment that they get from fishing. Uh, many commenters also felt that this was an example of government overreach. For the comments that were in support of the proposed rules, there were also some common themes expressed. Uh, many supporters believe that mandatory harvest reporting will lead to better data, which is crucial for better resource management and conservation efforts. And there is a belief that these rules will bring long term benefits in terms of fish population health and ecosystem balance. Supporters also noted that these proposed rules were a positive step towards ensuring accountability for both the commercial and recreational fishermen. And with that being said, uh, those that were in support of these proposed rules did stress the need to create an efficient, user-friendly reporting system. Uh, for the commenters who were undecided, the common theme was that they just needed more information about how fishermen would actually be reporting before they could decide whether or not they wanted to support these rules. Uh, like those who were in support of the rules, they stressed the importance of an easy to use reporting system and the undecided folks also had some concerns about the reliability of the self reported data. And that's pretty much the, the brief summary of the comments that we received. Great, Jesse, thank you. Sorry for overlooking you when I put you on the agenda. But anyway, uh, very interesting report. Okay, I think we now we are all chairman Bizzle. Yes, I have 1, 1 question. Do we have the ability um, to amend um, this rule uh, at a future date? And do we also have the ability to make suggestions to the general assembly about the legislation? Uh, I'll turn that over to uh, Philip. I don't think I think we can make suggestions, but I do not think we can amend this. Am I correct? Philip? I think the, the you will be able to amend it potentially in the future when you adopt the permanent rules to take the to replace the temporary rules. So right now you're just take your this is your first shot at uh, adopting the rules as required by the General Assembly uh, and doing so on a temporary basis, but temporary rules expire. So commissions are required to also adopt permanent rules to take the place of the temporary rules. So if there are modifications that are necessary uh, based on what I will call a dry run of this stuff, uh, then at that time, then that's certainly possible. It's just that no amendment to the rules can be uh, contrary to the direction of the General Assembly to adopt these reporting requirements. So to answer your question, Commissioner Hobgood? Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. Sure thing. Okay. Um, we've talked about these um, temporary rules quite often. Uh, if there's no further questions or comments on them, the chair would entertain a motion that we adopt both of these rules. Chairman Bizzle, if, if you don't mind, I would, Catherine has just a quick technical change to the rules that she would like to, to go over for just one second. Absolutely. Catherine, come on board. Thank you, Chairman Bizzle. Just to be clear, the version of each rule that's in your packet of materials that's online and was distributed for this meeting includes an identical change to each rule. It is a one sentence additional paragraph and all it achieves is to align the effective date of the requirements of each rule with the effective date 
spelled out in the session law. That was not included in the original publication of the rule, but it has been added here to be sure to clarify when these things will come into effect. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Appreciate that. Okay, being nothing else, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to um, adopt these temporary rules. Somebody speak up, please. Yeah, I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Who Raider. is that? Raider. Commissioner Raider makes a motion to adopt these temporary rules. Is there second. a second? Second. Who was that from? Sammy. Who? Sammy. Sammy. Okay, Sammy. Commissioner Corbett. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, Chairman, can yes. I make some comments on the record, please? Uh, sure thing. Go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, I just want to voice some general concerns with the language here. I know we can't do anything about it, but um, just so it's on the record, um, you know, it's important that the public understand, first of all, that this is a legislative initiative and not something put forth by right. the commission or the division. And I just want to state that there's two X sections of language that um, I just kind of just, just going to throw up, throw onto the table just to show my concern. So um, the first section one regarding fishermen not fishing from a vessel, the sentence no longer engaged in fishing. To me, that reads as a very gray and ambiguous statement, something that I potentially have um, issues with in terms of law enforcement. Um, the second one is more of a question, which is section five, and it says species length, if applicable. I'm curious as to why the phrase if applicable was put in there and if anybody could answer that for me. And I will have a, another quick follow up here. Chairman okay. Bissell, I, yes. I can address that if you'd like. Um, the, the species length, if applicable, the reason it's phrased that way is so that if for a given species, it makes sense to include that in what is required, then the rule establishes the authority for the commission and the division to ask that of anglers. If it's not in the rule, we cannot ask. It may or may not be germane in each of the species, especially moving forward over time. Um, and so it's included to have it be possible. And then as we work out the particulars of the reporting tool, we can include that as it pertains to each of the five species. Okay. Answer your question fine, Commissioner Roller. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, one more quick comment, if you, sure. if you may. So I think all of us here have generally suppressed a lot of support for shoring up our recreational um, data collection, as well as some of the loopholes in commercial reporting. Yeah. When it comes to recreational reporting, I'm certainly supportive of it. Uh, I guess my concern here is, as we move forward with this, is that what we're asking anglers is to report the species that the current system, MREP, actually works pretty well for. And those are the species that are harvested by a large group of people and are more common. We all know that MREP's deficiencies are things like quota monitored species, and you can put southern flounder or temper to potentially striped bass in that category if you were allowed to harvest them. Um, but we all know that looking at our greater species, such are our big game species that are really data deficient, rare event species or species that are caught by smaller groups of people. Um, you know, and there's a lot of just mislanguage that's been sent out. Like I received an email from the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation um, from Chad Thomas. And one of the statements in there was just just untrue. It said, not shockingly, the federal surveys have their limitations. In August 2023, new sources of error identified that brought the survey program to a halt through at least 2026. That is false. The survey is not brought to a halt. There have been a uh, uh, there has been an overestimation error put in there, and there are pilot studies being done, but MREP is still being used for stock assessments, fisheries management, and data is being collected. So that I've said my piece, and uh, I will. Turn my microphone off. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions or discussions on these two motions? Uh, on Chairman, does motion it, for two temporary rules. Just real quick, so I can put it on the record as well, just to follow up, Chairman Roller. Um, you know, my, my concern or issue is is there's five species, two of which you cannot harvest, so there's no data there, and then two species where you can only harvest one um, per person. So very little data there, and then obviously the third you can do fourth. And so going forward, it to me, if you really want to truly collect data, 
having releases um, added to a harvest or harvest and release program may, makes more sense to me. Really noted. Uh, okay. One follow up, cool. Mr. Chairman, if you may. I thought you want to turn your microphone. Uh, no, well, I, you know me. I, I talk a lot. Um, you know, I agree with uh, Commissioner Hobgood um, that we should be looking at releases in the future, particularly since this data stream is not going to be comparable to MREP in any way, and we're not sure how it can be used for management. I think the analogy I wanted to put on is the species we're asking people to report is if we were going to draw an analogy to hunting, we're asking people to report their squirrels, bunnies, and quail while ignoring the big game species like deer, turkeys, and bear. At least that's the analogy I see to uh, if we're going to use hunting to fishing. So yeah. um, I just, I guess I, my objection is generally to the species that were chosen, but again, I'm supportive of any, generally supportive of any new data collection streams that are going to improve fisheries management. Okay, right. Anything else? If not, uh, just we conduct a roll call vote. Certainly. Uh, before I do conduct that roll call vote, uh, will everyone look and just make sure that this is the appropriate motion, that I've captured it correctly here? It appears to be. Uh, awesome. Commissioner Roller, you made the motion so no commissioner Rader, you made a motion. yeah yes very correct okay all right roll call please commissioner buffet aye commissioner blanton uh commissioner corbett yes commissioner gardner commissioner gardner let's come back to her commissioner hobgood uh Commissioner Huggins? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Rader? Aye. Commissioner Roller? Aye. Chairman Bizzle? Aye. And Commissioner Gardner? We'll just mark her as absent then. Okay, motion passes without dissension. Thank you all for your time out of your busy days um hope you have a great weekend and we'll be seeing each other soon meeting is adjourned